hey guys welcome back once again to my youtube channel so for those of you that are new here hi my name is Elisa Diaz nice to have you here remember to subscribe to my channel hit the bell notification follow me on all social media platform the one I have of course okay so we're gonna make this intro very short so since I am 31 weeks pregnant you know and I have a kid already I was like, wouldn't it be a good idea if I react to myths videos? Like doctors, you know, like answering our questions. Well, not my questions, not your questions, but some questions that are around. You know the drill. So, that's what this video is going to be about today. So, we, we don't need an intro for that. It's self-explanatory. We're going to react to... Pregnancy myths. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Ugh. And I look cute. I look cute. Okay, so let's get into the video. I'm on. Uh, I'm gonna put it on the screen like the video that I'm watching for you guys to. You know what I mean. You know what I'm trying to say. So okay, let's get to it because I don't want the intro to be super long. So let's get to it and see you in a bit. <laughs> I'm Dr. Laura Riley, and I'm a high-risk obstetrician at New York Presbyterian Hospital while Cornell Medicine. My favorite thing to do is delivering babies. And I'm Dr. Dina Gothman. I'm also a high-risk pregnancy physician. I'm the chief of OB at New York Presbyterian Columbia University Irving Medical Center. And today, we will be debunking myths about childbirth. Oh, this is good. Wide hips mean easier birth. This is a total myth. And what we see as your hips aren't even reflective of like what's going on with the bones in your pelvis, which do matter. The bony pelvis is connected by cartilage, which is softer, which loosens up in the course of the latter part of pregnancy. So that gives the baby a little bit more room. And then labor, all those contractions and the coordination that forces the head into the pelvis, a lot of that depends on the baby, right? I think one thing that is frustrating for people is they will say at 38 weeks, am I gonna have a vaginal delivery? We can't tell. Because there's so many other factors that go into yeah. whether or not your baby is coming out vaginally. It's not just the baby's size, it's the baby's position, it's how well the baby tolerates holding its breath every three minutes. There's more to the story. Okay, I haven't heard this myth. Because I feel like it's where they're saying it's like there's much more to it than just having wider hips. So it's like I never heard that one before. That one is a new one for me. I've never heard that myth before. Never in my life heard it. This position to labor and give birth on is your back. That's a myth. What you might see on television or in the movies of a patient flat on their back is actually the worst position to labor and give birth in. We love to have patients be in bed, certainly on their side, but there's also a lot of opportunity to be sitting up and even to be walking around, depending again on the situation with your pregnancy, your baby and your labor, there's the opportunity potentially to take a shower. Some people use birthing balls as a place to sit. Many places now have have wireless fetal monitoring where you actually can even monitor the baby while you're moving around. And a lot also depends on whether or not you have anesthesia. Because once you have an epidural, it is fabulous for taking away the discomfort on your abdomen and those contractions, but it does in many ways weaken your leg muscles. So most hospitals will not allow you to walk around with your epidural in just because you may not be as strong. This is definitely a myth. You can in Okay, so she said two things that happened to me with my first daughter. So I did I feel like it's like a lie. I feel like it depends. It depends. It depends. It depends. Because in my opinion, like for me, for my body, for what I feel comfortable with, I feel like if I would give birth on my side, I will I will have been really uncomfortable but it's like for i have seen videos of like women like giving birth in many positions but i feel like for me for what for what's comfortable for me it was on my back you know what i'm trying to say and once i had the epidural in it's like 
I didn't want her to get out of bed because of the fear of like, wait, what she said. What if my legs are not strong enough to hold my weight? Like, you know what I'm trying to say? So it's like, hmm. So there you go. I didn't know that. <laughs> we we live and we learn. Slaver by eating spicy food. So this is... I've heard this one multiple times. Multiple times. Multiple times. And let me tell you, I feel like if that was true, honey, do you think, do you think that we will have a problem with any woman freaking inducing labor fast? I don't think so, right? Beth, there are a number of them out there. All of exactly. the things that people think you can do to induce labor. Pineapples, cream cheese, bumpy roads, sex, um, sex. That one, there's so, some truth to it, right? The nipple stimulation. Is, that's not a myth either. I know it's not a myth. Nipple stimulation actually does work. The tough part about nipple stimulation is that you get so many contractions at once that your baby doesn't love it. The sex and the nipple stimulation. <laughs> You heard that? She said nipple stimulation, right? So it's like, imagine like every time you get a contraction. <laughs> like, you, uh -uh, let me not say that because that's weird. <laughs> have sort of valid, plausible reasons why they may yeah. help. But I think there's not sort of a protocol for how to do it and how to do it safely. We know how to induce labor. Exactly. We have different medications that we can use vaginally, medications that we can use in the IV, and we know how to do that safely. I think there is no evidence for spicy foods. Sex is fine if it's comfortable and something that you want to be doing. Walking, being active, kind of getting out and about. But I think this baby's going to come when the baby's going to come. Your water. What she said is true. What she said is definitely true because Scarlett said she wasn't going to be here early, honey, and she didn't. It didn't matter what I did. And I was running, I, not running literally like in a, like, kill, no, no, not excessive running. But I was running, I was exercising, I was like drinking, like, you know, like teas and like eating this at a third because of my grandma. So it's like when the baby doesn't want to come, the baby doesn't want to come and that's it. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's like, yeah, I feel like I agree with what she's saying. It's like, when the baby's not about to pop out, is a no-no, so. Breaks with no warning. I know people see it in the TV and movies and it's a very dramatic event and it's clear cut and you rush to the hospital and the baby is born. That's not always how it happens. Sometimes it does break with a huge gush and it's very obvious. Sometimes there is a leak and patients are on. Okay, so when my water broke with the scar leak, honey, it was like the biggest gush of water that I have ever seen in my life. Of course, I was the first time on. Duh, I didn't know it was going to be like that, right? I've heard people told me about it, but it was just like that. But the one thing that I feel like people, new time moms, new time moms, first time moms that I've seen a lot, mostly on TikTok talk about, is that they think that oh, your water breaks and that's it. Like it's just one time water thing comes out, that's it. No. Like, I feel like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's way much more than that. It's, that, it's not like, okay, your water breaks, that's it, you're good to go, hospital, no more water. No, honey. No, it does not work like that. You're gonna, more water's gonna come out. Uh, more water's gonna come out. And nobody told me that. And that was something that I, re not regret, but I'm like, why did nobody tell, why did, why did nobody tell me? Like, at least like, yo, it's gonna happen more than once. You know what I'm trying to say? Nobody told me. So it's like, yeah, I feel like movies have lied to us a lot. A lot. And a lot of people, that's why they believe that myth. Door. And sometimes people don't know whether it's urine or it's their water breaking. If it's urine, it comes out and then it stops. And if it's your water, it continues. It does not stop. So put a pad on and if the pad is consistently wet and saturated, you have to think, gee, maybe my water broke. Sometimes we will break your water for you. For some patients, dude, and I have heard that that's so painful. Like when they when they have to break your water, I've heard that that's so painful. But I've heard again. <laughs> I heard. I have an experience. 
they will be in labor and progressing nicely in labor and the water will not have broken on its oh, own. Goodness. If you're unsure whether or not your water is broken, it's better to come in and let us tell you yes or no, rather than stay at home. Because if your water has broken and there's a long time before your delivery, you do increase the risk for getting an infection. That's what happened to me with Scarlett. It's like I, my water broke like a two, three in the morning and it was like nine in the morning and nothing yet, like, like I wasn't dilating. So they were like, uh-uh, like you have a long time, like your your water has been broken for a long period of time. So it's like, it's either we do an emergency, an emergency C-section or we start medicating you like, you know, to, to make you dilate or whatever. And one of the option was like the epidural, like the, I don't want to say the names, but you know, um, so they were like, yeah, we have to do it. It's either an emergency C-section or, or something to make you dilate like, really, um, not really fast, but something to make you progress with it, um, to dilate that. So yeah, but I didn't know that. I was like, oh, like, you know, como que, like your water breaks and just they will let like the baby do the things on its own but no so yeah if your water breaks that means the baby is coming very soon and what i just said what i just said what i was just talking about i feel like that is such a lie before they even say it. i feel like that's a myth that's a myth that's a myth that's not true because honey i have seen videos and my mom and like my sister and all of them just because your water break does not mean does not mean does not mean the baby's coming right away doesn't mean most of the time most of the time most of the time because i've seen and i've heard that it's like for first time mom it's like it could be a really long period of time after your water breaks but for second and third and fourth and more times like moms that have more kids for them it's like the labor is just faster but it's like with scarlet i was a first time mom honey did you know i'm not i'm not gonna get into details if only yeah we wish if this only. is not always the case it is all over the map because a lot depends on how many children you've had if it's your fourth baby and you're contracting and your water breaks i should be i should be what is what is she what is she I should be a doctor for that, for for for, for that or B G Y N or or delivery Coming that fast. If it's your first baby, your water breaks, you're not contracting. It could be 12, 24 hours. So it's hard to know contractions that come consistently with the baby's head against the cervix are what makes the cervix open. The cervix has to get to 10 centimeters before you can push. So that. Oh, and one thing, from the minute they put like the medication, like the petal, 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 I, I really say that word. And the epidural and all that, like, okay, wait, let me stop. Once they put the epidural and the rest of the medication, it was 1030 something. I gave birth at 1113. I just had to push like two times. That's it. It was out like this. But if you count from the minute, like I was in active labor, till the time i gave birth it was a period of like 12 13 14 hours i was just not dilating most of the time like since i started with active labor when all that stuff like they told me like oh look we're gonna have to do c-section because an emergency an emergency c-section because you're not dilating so yeah but after they put they hooked me up and everything honey it was like minutes the baby was out the baby was out. Process is the process of labor. If your water breaks in the course of that process, great. But that doesn't tell us the timing. For some subset of our patients, the water will break and the patient may not be in labor. That happens in probably eight to 10% of patients. So if you think your water is broken, you should call your provider mm -hmm. and say, my water's broken. I am contracting or not contracting. and when should I come in? Because that answer is gonna vary depending on the circumstances around your pregnancy. Eating the placenta is good for you. Okay, so this, this is my opinion on this. Don't come for me. 
don't come for me don't come for me but i feel like i don't i don't think i will be able to eat my placenta even though it's mine people are gonna come for me what did you know they take it in pills yeah no that's crazy yeah um the teacher eats them she yeah. had them in her class Mm. I okay. saw them. It's like it did not look like a pill. Baby. I know it doesn't. It like it was dried up yeah. like a raisin. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's yeah. like I feel like, I in my opinion, I wouldn't do it. Me, like myself, me, Solita, Joe, right? If you do it, if all that, don't worry. I don't want. I don't, I don't judge. This is a free. Um, ¿cómo se dice? Judge free zone. Don't worry. But me, in my opinion, I feel like I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it because I, I know they're going to come for me. I know they're going to come for me if I say what I have to say, but I don't care. In, in my opinion, it's like I, I wouldn't eat it because it's something that is coming out of my body. You know what I'm trying to say? It's something that was there for nine months. So it's like, I wouldn't eat it. I'm not going to, okay, I'm not going to say why. I'm not going to say why because I feel like a lot of people are going to come for me. And yeah, it's like, but don't worry if you do it. Don't worry. Let's see what they have to say about it. No. Don't go there. Absolutely not. Please, please don't eat your placenta. Many patients will ask about the utility of eating the placenta. There was some suggestion that eating the placenta after birth might prevent depression, anxiety. And while we're completely supportive of doing anything to prevent those issues, I think we have to recognize that there's no science behind the placenta being helpful to that. There was actually a recent publication from the American Academy of Pediatrics that outlined some of these less traditional practices surrounding birth, and this one is specifically mentioned, and that paper calls out the infectious risk. With Wait, bacterial contamination of the consumed placenta may cause infection in the individual who handles and or consumes these materials what what the placenta once extirped from the body is colonized with material genital ordinary flora i need to read this article i need to I'm gonna read the article. Out added benefit. So we are happy to have these conversations to talk with patients through shared decision-making processes, but our recommendation will almost always be you should not eat the placenta. Instead of eating the placenta, it's really important to pay attention to your nutrition, your hydration, your rest when you can with a newborn, and lots of support from family and friends. Labor usually lasts Okay, so I feel like in a way I was I was right, and I um I don't have a problem with you right. Nah, I'm paying. But what the fuck? I didn't know that. I did not know that because I've seen like so many women and 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 so many people like talk about like oh look oh look like the placenta is really good for the for your body and after postpartum and all that stuff like couple of hours. There are occasionally patients who've had children in the past who start to contract at home and come in and quickly have a birth with us, but it is definitely the exception, not the rule. Yes. Depends on how many kids you've had. Labor usually lasts, I'd say 12 to 24 hours is average for mm -hmm. your first baby. Second, third, way faster. Oh, then I'm lucky. You heard that, Alejandra? What? For the first baby, it usually lasts 12 to 24 hours oh, labor labor right oh but for their second child it's way much faster i'll try some that's me <laughs> you, Dude, you know how many kids my sister has seven six, six. six. and a pair of twins me? and i've never heard her say it was it wasn't that long it didn't take me no, that long no never mind that's just deceptive don't listen to her <laughs> she'll be like oh 
I know. I feel like they're ripping my legs apart. <laughs> you need to see. Mom took like a five minute video yeah, of her. Dude. Dude, it was like the first contraction she had. This woman was like on the floor. She was like, ah. Again, don't come for me. Like, I know contraction is not something that you should tell lady. Like, relax or it's not that painful for the sudden or third. But we make fun of our sister because she's she's not she doesn't have a high uh pain tolerance like we do that's why we make fun of it so don't come for me people and let's continue with the video the labor process has multiple stages and phases the early part of labor can take a fair amount of time some people will start with cramping and then the cramping is like and then they'll realize it's contractions those contractions then are maybe 20 minutes apart and then they're 10 minutes apart. And you actually need a lot of contractions that are three minutes yes. apart consistently to soften the cervix. And most people will do some of that at home for several hours. And then they'll call us and say, I think I'm in late. Yeah, this is what I did with Scarlett. Because way before my water broke, actually, I was having contractions. Like, my water didn't break and then the contractions kicked in. No, 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 no. Like, I started having contractions. But, but of course, it's like, I'm talking about, like, the real contractions. I'm not talking about the Braxton kick, um, kicks. No, 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 no. Because I had that, like, for a month. I'm being exaggerated. <laughs> but I had them, like, for a really long time. So, by the time I had my contractions, I was like, wait, is this normal? This is another. But I figured, I was like, wait, no, 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 no. Because they're really, like um consecutive and they were like 10 minutes apart and then they got down to five minutes apart and then it was like you know what i'm saying and and then in the middle of the night after i was experiencing already all these contractions my water broke you know what i'm trying to say so it's like if it happens the same thing i'm gonna die i'm gonna die i'm gonna die and then we'll say come on in yeah. once you get to sort of that six or so centimeters things start to speed up and then you eventually get to you know 10 centimeters and then the dude i went from four centimeters till like 10 not till like till 10 like this even the nurse she was like what 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 i hope it happens the same thing in that and with that with with this pregnancy because with scarlet was like this like you know the <sighs> get away from here i'm feeling it works usually you will begin to push mm -hmm. shortly after you are determined to be 10 centimeters and then that pushing process is called the second stage of labor and it's from the time that you're fully dilated until the time that your baby is out once the cord is clamped and cut then we go on to the next step which is we need to deliver the placenta we then oh. are going to do some things <laughs> to help prevent you from bleeding so that's sort of the last piece making sure that the it's identified okay, repair okay. tears sure that were created during the birth process <laughs> doctors slap the baby on the back after birth that's with scarlet they didn't do that they didn't do that and if I were to see a nurse or a doctor try to do that to my kid, mm -mm, no, no, yes, even even Scarlett was like, that's a no, no. I don't care how much of a professional you are, but no, you're not doing that. You're no. not doing that. Like I like my mom's thing. That's yours. Why did you take mine? Because I don't have one. Mine is over there, and I didn't want her to stand up. Oh. Go, go watch, go watch TV. Sasha. Oh, okay. Go, 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 wait, 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 go watch, go, go. Go, here, take the mirror. Go see yourself, go. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't let that happen. The myth. Oh, That's I'm a myth. There you go. And the movies. I think, I think actually, I was just going to say, I think <laughs> it actually is the movies. I think that, that it comes from the desire to stimulate the baby to take a big deep breath yeah. after we clamp the cord get the epidural early before it's too late mm. listen honey listen i only got the epidural because they told me that they were gonna do a, an emergency c-section of me on me if i wouldn't take no medication because i wanted to be a natural gal you know what i'm trying to say 
and they said okay a c-section an emergency c-section or we have to start giving you medication because you're not dilating that was the only reason why i took the epidural now i feel that they didn't give me like a, a um a time like oh look if you don't take it now then this out on a third but um they did told me told me the risks of me if i didn't take no medication because the problem was that it wasn't going to be too late the problem was that i already had a long time with my water broken so they didn't want to risk the chance the chance of the baby coming or like having an infection or like anything like that but <laughs> i'm gonna say that's the myth let's see how much i know that's a myth. Yeah, this is a myth, but it's a really common one that we hear. I really we wouldn't know. want you to get an epidural if you're not in labor. No, there I There really didn't. is no, no too late no, unless it's that the baby's coming or that you're unable to really sit still for them to place the epidural itself. I think it's our job to sort of work with you to figure out when is that just right for you, and it may not be the same for every patient. If you show up and you're 10 centimeters and you're like, I want an epidural, I will actually talk you down from that ledge because it's not that you can't get the epidural. It takes about 15 minutes to get the effect of the epidural. Yes. So 15 minutes into your 10 centimeters and pushing, your baby might be out by then. Have the conversation I with the like anesthesia team. Duh, it's 10 centimeters. Like, it's, it's there. It's there. Even if you're not ready to commit, meet the people, learn about the risks and benefits before you're in the active phase of labor, incredibly uncomfortable when it becomes harder to listen and process information. C-sections are the easy way out. That's a lie. That's a myth. That's a myth. Because hunty is like, I'm not taking away. I, like, I'm not saying like, oh, natural birth is like, <laughs> like, okay, like like anybody could do that because sometimes people you know like they tear and 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 it's 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 a whole lot of thing you know it's 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 every for each is case for each is own but i feel like a c-section the easy way out i don't think so because these poor women they have to go through the after process of it too and i don't think I don't think that's an easy way out. I don't. I don't think so. I'm not saying uh, that vaginal delivery is the easy way out either. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. But a C-section, the C-section and the care these women have to go through, and the pain they have to go through, and 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 no, I feel like that's a myth. That's a lie. No, uh -uh. there you go. You don't want a C-section unless there you, you go. Have a C-section. If you compare maternal risks associated with a vaginal delivery to a C-section, essentially everything is a little bit higher. Of course. And not even that. It Just imagine, just imagine when you have surgery, when they open you, right? It's like the first thing that they tell you, it's like, oh, infections and the aftercare and don't, don't do this, don't do that, that this, that, and the third. Imagine... A c-section where they have to open you like I don't know how many times like I think five times seven I don't remember but they have to open all these layers to get to the baby it mm, that's not the easy way I mean by everything you have a greater risk of infection a greater risk of bleeding and a greater risk of having a blood clot oh, after shit. The delivery and the recovery is definitely longer yes, the surgery itself is complicated so we in general don't want you to have surgery unless there's a reason you need to cut the cord as soon as the baby's out so this is a myth it's a myth it's a myth i didn't know that i didn't know that because scarlet the cord was around her neck so they had to cut it fast i was about to say that's not a me there you go i'm wrong it really moved towards something called delayed cord clamping which means we deliver the baby we place the baby on the patient's abdomen or chest 
the cord is still connected from the baby's belly button to the placenta that's still in the uterus and there's still blood flow going through that cord. And there have been studies showing that there are benefits to not clamping and cutting immediately if you don't have to. We keep an eye on the clock, we keep an eye on mom and baby, and then when the timing is appropriate, we'll clamp the cord and either cut it, but typically ask you or your support person or whoever else is participating in the birth if they'd like to participate by cutting the cord. It's harder than it looks. And, <laughs> and I do say that often to the support person when I hand them the scissor. Sometimes it takes more than one snip with the scissor to sort of get through that cord. It doesn't hurt the baby. What? Base. You heard that? You see the cord, the umbilical cord? It's hard to cut. I didn't know that. I thought that was like 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 skin. Como que taquete. Like if you cut yourself, it's like oh you cut yourself. But the cord, no. I didn't know that. Mm. That's another question I get all the time. Doing yoga poses can turn your breech baby. I don't think so. Any studies? I haven't seen good evidence that it's true. <laughs> if you're asking us, is there scientific research to say that downward dog or the flashlight or the voices helps? The flashlight. I think the answer would be no. I think if you ask us. Do any of these things hurt? I also think the answer is no. no. Um, as long as you can safely do a downward dog and yoga. I definitely oh. find patients worried. Those are yoga, yoga poses. And I'm over here thinking those were like, like I don't know, tricks and all that stuff. My beat. When they have an ultrasound at 28 weeks that the baby is breached, and they think the answer to that is that's totally normal. When you're approaching 37 weeks, and then is when we have to start having a conversation about how do we want to handle Okay, but my question here is, the question here is, That's I'm sorry, the question here is, for me, is them being upside down, like with the head down too early, bad as well, as not being breached, breach, breach, breached, like is, is it the same, because my baby has been upside down, like, with the head down since week 27 27 so i want to know is that a good thing or is that a bad thing because isn't 27 like it's still the second trimester it's not the third so hmm, i want to ask i have another appointment i just asked True, but there are plenty of times with the baby is breech at 37 weeks. You schedule a C-section for 39 weeks, and you come in on the day of your C-section, and the baby's head down. So it happens. Kids are still moving and still quite active even after 37 weeks. Knowledge is power. Thinking about the labor process and the birth process, talking to your provider, getting a sense of the practice, the unit, what things are like there are actually really, really important to help lead to a really smooth, positive birth experience. I think that this is where the birth plan is helpful. Having some knowledge. That's true. That is freaking true. That is freaking true. True. I'd rather be ready for everything than be unready and having chaos Chaos everywhere. This is where the video ends because I'm like shocked. I still haven't let go of the placenta thing. I haven't, I haven't recovered from that yet. I haven't record, I did recover from it. This was surprising. I'm not gonna say it wasn't. This was surprising. This was surprising. I feel like I'm gonna do more. I'm gonna just watch it more. I'm gonna definitely go back and like search that article because again, the placenta thing really got me because I've seen like so many like people and like you know videos and 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 i have i have even read like on my um apps like oh eating placenta or like taking the placenta and making them in pills or like doing this out in a third and that's something i didn't know that i'm gonna read the article point blank um let's leave the video here because i don't know where else to go like i don't know i don't know what else to say <laughs> so if you like this video comment below like it and share it and do what you have to do with this information i'ma link that video down below hope to see you here next time she has a backpack i don't even know how to do the outro of this video peace out i'm done